Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you're all doing great. Welcome to your favorite physics channel, College Physics. Here you will find work solutions to past papers by excellent teachers and A-star students. So please subscribe to our channel and forward it to other Cambridge learners. Thank you. Okay, so we're starting off with uh, P4, variant 43 from October, November 2019. So let's start. Question number one. Figure 1.1 1 .1 is the top view of a tank in an aquarium. The tank is filled with salt water. The depth of the water in the tank is 2 meters. Okay. We're given the depth. You know what the depth is? It's the height. Okay? So this is basically the height here. Okay? This is your tank. And this is my depth, which is 2 meters. Okay? Calculate the volume of the water in the tank. Now, what is the formula of volume? We all know that volume is equals to depth or height multiplied by surface area. Okay, so area we will calculate here. Whatever thing will be here, our area will be And then we are obviously given the depth, which is the height. Say, So, first of all, we have to calculate the area. Now, how are we going to do that? We're given this. It's, it's obviously not a regular shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide this shape into two different pieces. Take it. So we're just going to, I'm just going to make a line here. And divide it into two different pieces. And then find the area of both these different pieces. Pele, I'm going to find the area of this. Then I'm going to find the area of this. And then add them and we'll get the total area. Okay. First, let's find the area of A. And then Isko will just call this B. And this is A. Take it the area of A. Area of A will be 1.6 multiplied by 1.1. Take it is equals to area of A. And then B ke liye hum karenge. B ke liye hum karenge. Uh, 1 multiplied by 3.2 is equals to area of B. Take it. So, our total area will be 1 second. 1.6 multiplied by 1.1 plus. 1 multiplied by 3.3 that means 3.2 so this answer my pass ara hai around 4.96 which is the total area so we're gonna go uh we're already given the depth which is two meters therefore two multiplied by the total area which is 4.96 the answer will be 9.9 meter cube meter cube take okay? uh, it the density of the water in the tank is 1.1 into 10 to the power 3 kgs per meter cube calculate the mass of the water in this tank Ab, uh, what is the formula of density density is equals to mass upon volume now we've already calculated the volume here therefore all we're going to do is multiply volume by density to get the mass mass is equals to density Multiplied by volume, which is 9.9. So, this answer will be 1.1 into 10 to the power 4 kg. Say? Okay. See. Calculate the pressure due to the water at the level 0 0.8 meters above the base of the tank. Above, this is not, this is obviously they're trying to trick you. It's because it's above the base of the tank. So basically, if um, this is your tank, right? This is the depth of the tank. This is the base of the tank. And what was the depth or the height? It was 2 meters. Yira, 2 meters. Okay? So I'm going to go. This is 2 meters. And we're told the pressure due to the water at the level of 0 0.8 above the base. So this base is 0 0.8. So what will happen here? The depth will be 1.2 because 1.2 plus 0.8 is equal to is equal to 2. So depth is my 2. Hai. Therefore, pressure ka formula is equal to P is equal to raw GH. Density is our water. We have given it. The density, actually we were given it 1.1 1 .1 into 10 to the power 3. So I'm going to write it down. 1.1 1 .1 into 10 to the power 3. And G is 10. And height is height is 1.2 because we're told that the height is 0 0.8 meters 
above the base. This is the base above it. So we're left with 1.2 out of the total 2. So I will write into 1.2. And the answer is 1.3 into 10 to the power 4 pascals. Do not forget the units. And we're done with this question. Okay, question number 2. State in words the equation that defies the moment of a force. Moment kya hota hai? Moment is equals to force multiplied by perpendicular distance from that, from the pivot or whatever, from the point of turn. Okay, so uh, that's exactly what I'm going to write. Moment. Uh, it's, it says define in words the equation that defines the moment of a force. I'm going to write it as an equation. Is equals to force multiplied by perpendicular distance. Say, state what is meant by the moment of a force. It what does it mean? Jab koi force ka moment hota hai. It basically the turning effect. Okay, we're always talking about the turning effect due to a force. Take it. So like that, turning effect due to the force. Say. Force is a vector quantity. State what is meant by a vector quantity. Now, everybody knows that okay, vector quantities have both direction and magnitude. If you do not understand, uh, I, I think everybody knows what a vector is. Okay? Because uh, basically, for example, we have speed, which is not a vector. Okay? It's scalar. So, speed is just above speed. You know? It doesn't really matter if you're direction. Mein ja direction change ho ki, speed is constant. Ho ki. But velocity is a vector. This is the difference between speed and velocity is that if you change the direction, velocity changes as well. That doesn't happen in speed. So vector, it, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, quantity that is affected by both magnitude change and direction. You can also that has magnitude and direction. Take it. Figure 2.1 shows a crane, a tower crane used to lift a load on a construction site. Explain how the count, uh, the counterweight prevents the cane from toppling over. Obviously, now I will explain through the uh, diagram. See, we have a load, right? Obviously, this load has a weight. Yes or no? This weight will pull the crane downwards. It has a what? Clockwise moment. This force produces a clockwise moment on the tower, the tower crane, right? So how do we prevent this from toppling over in a clockwise direction? Is we use the counterweight. Because the counterweight also has weight. So it moves it in an anti-clockwise direction. Therefore, this load, which is trying to produce a clockwise direction, is countered with the counterweight which produces an anti-clockwise rotation your anti-clockwise moment okay so putting this into words i'm gonna write that it provides the counterweight okay it provides an anti-clockwise moment okay uh, to prevent resultant turn uh, resultant clockwise turning effect due to the load because like i said above okay the load is producing a clockwise moment and the counterweight is produ producing an anti-clockwise so they both counter react and cancel each other out due to load Ah, yeah, you can also write this total clockwise moment is equals to total anti clockwise moment. moment. Now we know that this is because of the load and this is because of the counterweight. Take care. 
Next question. Figure 3.1 shows a waterfall. Describe the main energy transfer which is taking place as the water falls. Now, energy, for example, height decrease ho rahi hai. So what will happen? Potential energy will decrease. And we all know that when potential energy decreases, decrease in potential energy, it leads to an increase in kinetic energy. So that's exactly what I write. Conversion from... And we know it's gravitational potential energy because it is affected by height. And pure the electrical potential energy which is inside batteries, etc, etc. Conversion from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy. Say, the speed of the water as it hits the bottom is 21 meters per second. Calculate the height of the waterfall. Okay, so now we have speed, we have to take height. What will we use? We will use kinetic energy gained is equals to potential energy lost. Okay, so half mv squared is equals to mgh. We have cancelled M cancel kar diya. and we have to calculate height. Obviously, we have to know what will happen. So, we have to v squared take it upon 2 multiplied by g is equals to height. So, we have to know height is equals to v. How much is 21 squared? Take it. What number is 21 squared upon 2 into 10? Because g is 10. So the answer I have is height ka is 22 meters. State and explain any assumptions you made in question 2. Oh, what are the assumptions I am making? Is that that the potential energy is converted to the kinetic energy. Mein convert ho Which is obviously real life mein aisa nahi hota because we have air resistance. Which is why energy is lost. So we will write uh, the assumption that I am making is no energy is lost, lost to surrounding. lost to surrounding or in other words you can say all potential energy converted to kinetic energy take it here no energy loss actually no energy loss is down yeah maybe no energy loss makes no difference b the sun is a source of energy for most energy resources used to produce electricity state two energy resources that have another source of their energy okay uh bhi ho sakta hai. for example we write that it's geothermal ho gaya because obviously it's from earth se hota hai. Hai? and uh, and it's from many places from earth se then tidal is in different seas mein ho sakta hai, ya dams mein ho sakta hai. nuclear is where you can do anything so, uh, just solar energy is the source, which is the sun, or any source. Nahi hai, hai? So, you can write the, uh, in the marketing scheme also, we're given three options, which is uh, geothermal, hai, nuclear, the pit, tidal. Any two of these. Because they have, uh, they have ultimate sources. This is such energy that has many sources. Hai, Okay, question number four. Solids have a fixed shape. Liquids adapt to the shape of their container and f- gases for their container. Explain in terms of the forces between the molecules and the arrangement of molecules why solids, liquids and gases have these properties. So first, we explain why do solids have a fixed shape. Second, liquids we explain why do liquids adapt to the shape of their container. And gases we explain why do gases fill their container. Take a solids. Solids are obviously fixed shape because there are strong forces between the molecules. And those molecules are arranged in a fixed lattice arrangement or a regular arrangement. Okay. So, solids we will write. Oops. Molecules arrange in a regular lattice pattern with very strong forces between them. Okay. 
अब लिक्विड्स लिक्विड्स अडेप्ट टू द शेप ऑफ देयर कंटेनर वाई बिकॉज मॉलिक्यूल्स में इतनी स्ट्रॉन्ग फोर्स नहीं है जितनी सॉलिड्स में और ना ही कि वो एक रेगुलर अरेंजमेंट में अरेंज है सो देन यू नो दे स्लाइड ओवर इच अदर एंड देन दे टेक द शेप ऑफ कंटेनर सो सो ना दिग फिर सो वे कैन राइट ऑन मॉलिक्यूल्स आर हैव एन इर रेगुलर अरेंजमेंट ठीक है एंड दे डो नॉट दे फोर्सेज आर नॉट स्ट्रॉग एज सॉलिड्स एंड द मॉलिक्यूल्स आर फर्दर पार्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द फोर्स इज नॉट बींग स्ट्रॉग एनफ ठीक है तो हम लिखेंगे कि मॉलिक्यूल्स have an irregular arrangement and attractive forces are not that strong ठीक है ये लिख दिया हमने and gases fill their container अब क्या होगा molecules have no arrangement theek hai they are have absolutely no arrangement they are, and their forces are very very weak so the molecules are further apart and they are able to spread around theek hai hum ye likhenge molecules have weak ya to prab ye bhi likh sakte no forces according to ideal gases between them theek hai and are very far apart theek hai ye the way we can get diffuse easily because they're not attracted to each other so they diffuse out easily say question number 5 an electric kettle contains water at a temperature of 19 degrees celsius The kettle has a power rating of 3 kilovolts and is switched on for 3.5 minutes. Calculate the energy supply to the kettle by the uh, electricity supply. ठीक है हम energy calculate करनी है, energy calculate करनी है और हमारे पास temperature भी है, हमारे पास power power भी है, power rating हाँ power भी है, हमारे पास time भी है, time और temperature को मैंने same कर लिया. तो एनर्जी का फॉर्मूला हमें पता हो क्या होता है एनर्जी हमें पता है कि एनर्जी इज इक्व टू सॉरी एनर्जी इज इक्व टू पावर इन टू टाइम बिकॉज पावर इज इक्व टू एनर्जी अपॉन टाइम ठीक है तो हम कर देंगे पावर इन टू टाइम तो पावर हमारे पास क्या है थ्री थाउजेंड बिकॉज थ्री किलो वॉल्स ना सो थ्री थाउजेंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाई टाइम कितना है थ्री पॉइंट फाइव मिनट्स पर हमें सेकेंड में चाहिए तो हम करेंगे थ्री पॉइंट फाइव मल्टीप्लाइड बाई सिक्सटी सेकेंड में आ जाएगा सो एनर्जी इज इक्व टू अराउंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी किलो जूल्स ठीक है सिक्स हंड्रेड थर्टी थाउजेंड जूल्स मैंने किलो जूल्स में लिख दिया है एट थ्री पॉइंट फाइव मिनट्स द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द वाटर रीचेज वन हंड्रेड डिग्रीज पहले हमारे पास क्या था ठीक है नाइनटीन डिग्रीज था फिर हो गया हंड्रेड डिग्रीज तो चेंज इन टेम्परेचर इज इक्व टू वन हंड्रेड माइनस नाइनटीन तो इसका आंसर आएगा एटी वन डिग्री सेल्सियस विच इज़ द चेंज इन टेम्परेचर The volume of the water of the kettle is, uh, one thousand seven hundred centimeter cube, and its density is one gram per centimeter cube. The specific heat specific heat capacity of the water is four thousand two hundred joules per, uh, kg degree Celsius. Calculate the thermal energy gained by the water. अब हमें thermal energy gain. तो इसका formula को पता है हमें mass दिया हुआ है हमें specific heat density दी हुई है. Why am I saying specific? Ah, specific heat density D V here. How many temperature change there? So obviously we're gonna use E is equals to M C delta T. Yeah, Q is equals to M C delta T. E. Yeah, then Q is equals to M C delta T. So mass, we're gonna take out. We're gonna volume D V or density D V. I know that density is equals to mass upon volume, and mass is equals to density into volume. So density, my pass here one gram per centimeter cube. मल्टीप्लाइड बाई वॉल्यूम इज़ वन थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड ठीक है तो अगर मैं इसको निकालूँ मास आ रहा है हमारे पास वन सेकेंड एक मिनट वाई मैं कैलकुलेटिंग दस मास तो वही आ रहा है सो हमारे पास मास होगा अराउंड इससे तो मास निकल रहा है सेवनटीन हंड्रेड ग्राम्स ठीक है सेवनटीन हंड्रेड ग्राम्स लेकिन हमें ग्राम्स भी नहीं हमें के जी में चाहिए होगा मास होगा 
1.7 kg mass ठीक है तो 1.7 multiplied by 4,200 joules per kg centigrade and did I say centigrade? Sorry. So you calculate this and the answer is 580 kilo joules. Calculate the efficiency of the kettle. Efficiency मतलब के के कितनी energy use हो रही है और कितनी energy waste हो रही है उसका basically ratio होता है तो efficiency का क्या formula होता है ये efficiency का symbol होता है useful ये तो आप power भी use कर सकते हो उसमें useful power output versus total power input या आप energy का कर सकते हो हमें energy बताई हुई है ठीक है ऊपर हमने हर जगह energy calculate की हुई है कि कितनी energy उसको supply कर रही है kettle को ठीक है और कितनी energy गेन कर रहा है पानी ठीक है तो जो कैटल को एनर्जी सप्लाई हो रही है ठीक है दिस इज टोटल एनर्जी इनपुट हाँ कि नहीं और जो ये एनर्जी है ये क्या है ये आउटपुट एनर्जी ये पानी को मिल रही है सो दिस इज टोटल एनर्जी आउटपुट ठीक है तो फॉर्मूला क्या होगा यूजफुल एनर्जी ठीक है आउटपुट अपॉन टोटल एनर्जी इनपुट so output of my bus 580 kilojoules and input of my bus 630 kilojoules so it doesn't really make a difference if I put K and K and K and cancel out so 58 divided by 63 is around 0.92 but efficiency usually we give percentage but if you don't write 0.92 so I'm just going to write it as percentage which is 92% okay डेसिमल से परसेंटेज में कन्वर्शन होता है मल्टीप्लाई बाय हंड्रेड ठीक है क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स फिगर सिक्स पॉइंट वन ओके रिप्रेजेंट्स अ वेव फ्रंट ऑफ साउंड वेव्स ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम ट्रैवलिंग इन एयर फ्रॉम लेफ्ट टू राइट नेम द रीजन गिवन इन द सॉरी स्टेट द नेम गिवन द रीजन अराउंड ए इन द डायग्राम ए कहाँ पर है ए ये नहीं है ए ये है क्योंकि ये एरो हमें नज़र आ रहा है कि पॉइंट क्या है टुवर्ड्स ए अब यहाँ पर क्या हो रहा है वेव फ्रंट्स छोटे हुए हुए हैं वेव फ्रंट छोटे हुए हुए हैं मतलब कि यहाँ पर छोटी वेव लेंथ है छोटी वेव लेंथ है मतलब कि कंप्रेशन हुआ हुआ है तो ए में कंप्रेशन है यहाँ पर ऑबियसली बड़ी वेव फ्रंट है तो वेव लेंथ बड़ी हुई है तो यहाँ पर कंप्रेशन है तो यहाँ पर ऑबियसली रिफ्रैक्शन होगा यहाँ प्रेशर सॉरी यहाँ हाई प्रेशर है और यहाँ लो प्रेशर है ठीक है so A is compression and B is rare fraction on figure 6.1 draw a double hat headed arrow to show one wavelength so कहीं पे भी आप एक wavelength दिखा दें ठीक है आपको पता होना चाहिए कि wave front क्या होता है ये मैं बताया बना wave front wave front is from one crest to another crest ये तो फिर from one trough to another trough and this represents what? One wavelength. ठीक है? तो अगर मुझे यहाँ पर जाकर draw करना हो wavelength एक, so I'm gonna go S. ठीक है ये मेरे पास एक wavelength आ गई. किसी में भी बना ले makes no difference. जब आप समझे अगर मैं यहाँ बनाने जाऊँगी, समझे यहाँ का paper है, इस तरह लग रहा है. And you make it here, it just I can't see it. You know what I mean? So I better ये कि जो सबसे बड़ा area है वहाँ पर draw कर लें. See the loudness of the sound increases at the same pitch. Pitch क्या represent करती है? Pitch represent करती है frequency. तो अगर frequency same है और loudness increase हो रही है, तो state and explain any changes there would be in the pattern of the wave fronts. Wave front का क्या होगा? Wave front ये होगा कि हमारे पास amplitude change होगा, ठीक है? Loudness amplitude से होता है. Loudness amplitude से होता है तो amplitude अगर change होगा उससे let me just draw wave ठीक है ये हमारा wave है सही ये हमारा this is amplitude ठीक है and this is wavelength सही अगर amplitude बढ़ रहा है या कम हो रहा है उससे wavelength पे कोई effect नहीं आएगा सही तो हम लिखेंगे और wave front क्या होता है wave front representation होती है wave length की for example from here to here is one wave front या from here to here is one wave front या from here to here is one wave front so wave front पे कोई effect नहीं आएगा ठीक है 
लेकिन हम यहाँ पे लिखा हुआ है स्टेट एंड एक्सप्लेन एनी चेंजेस देर बी इन द पैटर्न द वे फ्रंट स्टेट एंड एक्सप्लेन तो अगर हम लिख भी रहे हैं कि नहीं होगा वे फ्रंट में कोई पैटर्न तो हम बताएंगे क्यों तो हम लिखेंगे कि अब देखिए तीन मार्क्स का तो मैं ये बताना होगा कि वे फ्रंट कंप्रेशन में क्लोजर है और रेफ्रैक्शन में फर्दर अपार्ट है ठीक है तो हम लिखेंगे वे फ्रंट सॉरी इज क्लोजर एट कंप्रेशन एंड फर्दर एट रिफ्रैक्शन बट दिस इज नॉट डन हम बोलेंगे कि लाउडनेस चेंजेस ड्यू टू चेंज इन एम्पलीट्यूड This, however, has no effect on the wavelength. ठीक है तो obviously wave front जो पहले का था वो भी बाद में भी same ही रहेगा जो ये wave front है वो बाद में भी same ही रहेगा क्योंकि wave length same है लेकिन amplitude बढ़ेगा या कम हो जाएगा D. The wave passes into water. अब पानी क्या है It has a higher, it has a higher denser medium. तो क्या होगा अगर हमारी frequency तो same रहेगी ठीक है Frequency same रहेगी but because sound waves, sound waves क्या होती हैं Medium waves होती हैं आपको पता है अब पानी में ज़्यादा medium है ज़्यादा denser है तो उनकी velocity increase हो जाएगी पानी के अंदर than air. तो अगर velocity increase होगी ठीक है मैं देख देती हूँ v इज इक्व टू एफ लैमडा लैमडा तो कांस्टेंट है वेलोसिटी अगर इंक्रीज होगी तो स्पीड भी इंक्रीज हो जाएगी वेलोसिटी इंक्रीज होगी तो वेवलेंथ भी इंक्रीज हो जाएगी बिकॉज इट्स अ मीडियम वेव साउंड वेव्स आर मीडियम वेव्स पानी में ज़्यादा मीडियम है मीडियम ज़्यादा डेंस है तो उसकी वेलासिटी इंक्रीज होगी तो वेव लेंथ विल ऑल्सो इंक्रीज तो दैट एग्जैक्टली वर्ट वेर गन राइट डाउन ठीक है दैट वेलासिटी व be greater in water as it's a denser medium this will cause wavelength to increase as well ab jab wavelength increase karega to kya hoga wave front bhi bada hoga aur the waves will be more spread out your further apart kyunki wavelength increase kar rahi hai to hum likhenge waves theek hai will spread out theek hai and ye ho gaya question question number 7 okay 7.1 figure 7.1 shows the position of a converging lens its principal axis and an object o each principal focus of the lens is labeled f on figure 7.1 draw a ray diagram to locate the position of the image formed by the lens label the image i acha theek hai to pehle to hum draw karenge ki jo hamari rays hain wo object ke through phir lens mein ja rahi hain so ye hamari pehli ray ho gayi theek hai just extend a little bit and फिर ये obviously इसको touch करके क्या होगी converge होगी तो converge होगी तो focal length focal point के through जाएगी right तो ये हमने कर दिया कि ये focal point के through जा रही है मैं इसको यहाँ बना देती हूँ इतना ज़्यादा सही है ठीक है and हम second ray draw करेंगे जो lens के center से जाएगी right और इस तरफ जाएगी फिर ठीक है तो ये लेंस के सेंटर को टच करेगी एग्जैक्टली ठीक तो इस हिसाब से जो हमारी इमेज बनेगी वो होगी ये हमारी इमेज होगी ठीक है दिस इज आवर इमेज सो वी ड्रू द रेड आई ग्राम टू लिखे द पोजिशन ऑफ द इमेज एंड वी लेबल्ड इट आई Describe the nature of the image. अब आपको नज़र आ रहा है कि image क्योंकि 
बड़ी है ऑब्वियसली ऑब्जेक्ट से ज़्यादा दिस इज़ द लेंथ ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट दिस इज़ द लेंथ ऑफ द इमेज सो इट इज़ लार्ज एंड ऑल्सो क्योंकि ये अपराइट होगी इमेज अपराइट होगी एंड वर्चुअल होगी वर्चुअल है क्योंकि ये कन्वर्जिंग uh, लेंस है तो हम लिखेंगे कि डिस्क्राइब द नेचर ऑफ द इमेज इट इज इन लार्ज एंड एंड अपराइट उसके साथ साथ इट्स ऑल्सो वर्चुअल ठीक है Images formed by lenses sometimes have coloured edges. So just a reason for this. अब इसके coloured edges होंगे वो इस वजह से है कि क्योंकि sometimes क्योंकि converging जो lens है हमारी उसके through sometimes light diffract हो जाती होगी अगर light sorry diffract नहीं refract हो जाती होगी light refraction की वजह से जो white light है वो dispersion होती है उसकी तो dispersion होगी तो colours produce होंगे तो हम लिखेंगे dispersion of light in glass ठीक है विच इज़ आवर लेंस सही तो डिस्पर्शन की वजह से कलर्स प्रोड्यूस होते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर एट फिगर एट पॉइंट वन शोज ए नेगेटिवली चार्ज कंडक्टिंग स्फीयर एंड फिगर एट पॉइंट वन ड्रॉ इलेक्ट्रिक फील पैटर्न अराउंड दिस फीयर अब आपको पता है कि इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड जो होगी वो इसके अराउंड प्रोड्यूस होगी इस तरह कुछ रेडियली प्रोड्यूस होगी ठीक है अब इसकी डायरेक्शन क्या होगी आपको पता है कि जब हमारे पास कोई पॉजिटिव चार्ज होता है तो उसकी इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड उससे अवे पोजिशन होती है टूवर्ड्स ए नेगेटिव पॉजिटिव से नेगेटिव टूवर्ड्स होती है तो नेगेटिव के टूवर्ड्स होगी सही तो ये हमारी इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड उपसीज इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड अराउंड अवर नेगेटिवली चार्ज ओके The current in the electrical device is zero point two one amperes. Calculate the charge that flows through a seventy five second period of time. So we know the formula Q is equals to I T, and I am our zero point two one, and time is seventy five. So the answer is sixteen coulombs. Take it. Question number nine. Okay, figure nine point one shows a circuit containing an LED and टू रेजिस्टर्स इन पैरल ईच ऑफ रेजिस्टेंस आर ठीक है एल ई डी क्या होता है लाइट इमिटिंग डायोड इट्स दिस अ डायोड दैट इमिट्स लाइट वन इट्स वन द करंट इज फॉरवर्ड बेस्ड ठीक है सो द नॉर्मल ऑपरेटिंग वोल्टेज ऑफ द एल ई डी इज टू पॉइंट वन वोल्ट एंड द नॉर्मल करंट इज जीरो पॉइंट वन नाइन एम्फियर द पोटेंशियल डिफरेंस अक्रॉस द एल ई डी इज मेजर्ड विद वॉल्ट मीटर ऑन फिगर नाइन पॉइंट वन ड्रॉ अ सिम्बल फॉर द वॉल्ट मीटर कनेक्ट टू द सॉकेट ठीक है हमें वॉल्ट मीटर से एल ई डी के अक्रॉस वोल्टेज निकालनी है तो आपको पता है अगर किसी भी चीज़ के अक्रॉस हमें वोल्टेज निकालनी होती है वही ड्रॉ इट पैरल टू इट इफ वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट द वोल्टेज अक्रॉस दीज रेजिस्टर्स वो मेक वोट वोट मीटर पैरल टू दीज राइट However, if we wanna uh, calculate the voltage across this LED, we will make a voltmeter parallel to this LED. Say, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. Is we're gonna voltmeter. Say, and what is it saying? The current in the LED is measured with an amp meter. Now, for drawing the amp meter, that measures the direct uh, the current that flows through the the uh, led it has to be in series amp meter is always drawn in series and volt meter is always drawn in parallel so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to draw an amp meter and here we go take it say calculate the value of r when the led is operating normally what is r this is r ye r hai ha ke nahi so we have to find the value of r so first let's put down the values that were already given First, we are told that the LED operates on two point one volts, and the current of the circuit is zero point one nine amperes. So, some basic rules that all of you should know is that when something is in series, take it. The so basically we have two areas. Okay, let me just highlight those areas. We have two different areas. 
the first area is this okay the second area is this for both of these areas okay for both of these areas the voltage is going to be added when something is in series the voltage is added therefore since we have the total voltage of 3.7 volts and this one's voltage is 2.1 volts the resistor's voltage will be 1.6 because 1.6 plus 2.1 is 3.7 so its total voltage will be 1.6 when something is in parallel, this is total will be 1.6. Now, when something is in parallel, I'm talking about both of these R's. They're both in parallel. It will have the same voltage. So, they both will be 1.6 volts each. Take it. Now, we know the voltage of everything. Let's go on to finding out the current of everything. When something is in series, its current is not, the, its current is the same. Take it. So, this will, since... The LED will operate on 0 0.19 amperes. Both of these combined, combined will act on 0 0.19 amperes. Combined, I'm not talking each of them singularly, combined. So, if both of them, okay, if both of them combined, ek saath gives us 0 0.19. So, ek ka kya hoga? 0 0.19 divided by 2 is 0. Ek second. 0 0.095 0 0.19 divided by 2 is 0 0.095 yes so this will be 0 0.095 amperes and so will this 0 0.095 amperes take it this is the method that i find the easiest take it to find these things but there are literally multiple ways to do this i i know of three different ways to do this up just the dk sabi up r ko find out good thing it doesn't matter as long as you're getting the same answer Take it now, we're just going to calculate R, which is this basically. So, V is equals to IR and R is equals to V upon I. So, V kya hai iska? V hai 1.6 volts. Take it. And I is equals to 0 0.095. 1.6 upon 0 0.095. So, the answer is 16.8, which is like almost 17 so i'm going to write 17 17 ohms okay because uh everywhere else we're given two significant figures therefore i chose two significant figures but you can write 16.8 it's not an issue but i would prefer to have 17 the chemical marking scheme aapko significant figures mein likhne ko bolti hai okay 10a uh, a magnet and a coil are attached separately to a door and a door frame as shown in figure 10.1. The purpose of the arrangement is to activate the circuit connected to an LED indicator when the door is opening or closing. This will provide a visual indication that the door is being used. Take it. So what is happening here? Basically, here is current induction and current produce. Ho Okay, how do we know this? As we see an LED connected here, but it's not really connected to a source of current. However, it's still working. How is that possible? Because current is induced. Now, how is induced or current? Here, you have a coil, here you have a magnet. It is very, very obvious. That is what? Electromagnetism. Okay? So, Explain why the indicator comes on and off when the door is opened. Now, you know that here is a coil. Hai. This coil is connected to a circuit. When this magnet, this magnet which produces obviously a magnetic field. Okay, this is, it moves from north to south. So, this is the magnetic field uh, pr produced by the, a magnetic field produced by this specific magnet. When the door opens and closes, the magnetic field changes. The magnetic field in the coil, this magnetic field coil is coming, when the door opens and closes, the magnetic field changes. And when it changes, it induces an EMF in the coil. And that EMF produces a current, which in turn causes the LED light or the indicator to work. So I'm going to write it down. Take it. Movement of the mag magnet. of the magnet 
causes a change a changing magnetic field field in the coil which in turn which in turn this induces an emf ya to phir current in the coil in the coil ya across the led theek hai led aapko ye likhna hai ki uh the light goes off when the magnet is no longer directly below the coil is kamata bata hai ki jab obviously jab magnet coil ke directly niche hoga theek hai wo move karke aaya lekin wo coil ke directly niche hai to ye jo uski lines hai theek hai magnetic field ki wo coil se bilkul parallel ja rahi hai theek hai to current kis tarah produce hoga nahi produce hoga kyunki current cut off hi nahi ho raha करंट चेंज ही नहीं हो रहा जब करंट सोलिनॉइड या कॉयल के बिल्कुल थ्रू जा रहा होता है चेंज नहीं हो रहा था तो चेंज इन मैग्नेटिक फील्ड नहीं होता देर फॉर ई एम एफ नहीं प्रोड्यूस होती सो दैट्स एग्जैक्टली वेर गन राइट डाउन द लाइट गोज ऑफ गोज ऑफ वेन मैगनेट मैगनेट इज़ नॉट मूविंग ये लिख सकते हैं ये तो आप ये भी लिख सकते हैं कि मैगनेट कॉयल के डायरेक्टली ब्रो नहीं है मैगनेट नॉट मूविंग आई प्रफर्ड ठीक है ये तो फिर ये भी कि अगर मैगनेट ऑबियसली हट जाए और कॉयल के अराउंड चले जाए कहीं और चले जाए तो भी लाइट ऑफ हो जाएगी क्योंकि फील चेंज नहीं हो रही ठीक है सो द सेकेंड वन इज द डोर शट्स द इंडिकेटर comes on more brightly but for a shorter time than it did in one suggest why this happens theek hai jab darwaza band hota hai indicator on hota hai but it becomes more brightly for a short term time than it did when in one suggest why this happens obviously door jo hai wo bahut jaldi se band hota hai theek hai jaldi se band hota hai to Uh, it's fast EMF being produced in the coil. Therefore, a higher amount of current in the LED. ठीक है तो आप लिख देंगे कि ये भी हो सकता है कि जो डोर है या मैगनेट है ठीक है वो एक कम टाइम के लिए बंद हो रहा है ठीक है शॉर्ट लेंथ टाइम के लिए मूव कर रहा है फास्ट होता है ना जब एंड पे बंद हो रहा होता है तो वो जल्दी से बंद हो जाता है तो उसकी वजह से ज़्यादा फील चेंज होती है और ज़्यादा ई एम एफ रिड्यूस होता है ठीक है तो हम लिखेंगे कि द डोर शट्स राइट इट्स नॉट जस्ट मूविंग सो डोर क्लोज मोर क्विकली देन देन सॉरी वेन देन नो सॉरी इट क्लोज मोर क्विकली देन इट वॉज ओपनड जैसे अगर खुला तो उससे ज़्यादा तेज़ी से बंद हो रहा है ठीक है कि शट हो रहा है तो फास्ट होता है तो उसकी वजह से क्या हो रहा है दे फोर फास्ट चेंज इन मैग्नेटिक फील्ड एंड मोर करंट करंट इन एल ठीक है टेन बी सॉकेट ब्रेकर इज रिकमेंडेड टू यूज विद एन इलेक्ट्रिक लॉन मोर स्टेट टू रीजन्स फॉर दिस रिकमेंडेशन अब ऑबियसली के सर्किट ब्रेकर क्या होता है कि जब वो ज़्यादा करंट आ रहा होता है ठीक है तो वो सर्किट ब्रेकर ऑफ हो जाता है और प्रिवेंट करता है आपके उसको डैमेज से और ऑल्सो आपको ऑबियसली इलेक्ट्रिक शॉक से प्रिवेंट करता है ठीक है तो इसके रीज़न मैं ये लिख देती हूँ कि प्रोटेक्ट्स सो ये अवॉइड्स एक्सेस करंट एंड दे फॉर डैमेज टू द लॉन मोवर एंड ऑल्सो 
protects uh, protects the person against electric shock protects against electrocution ठीक है अब ये बोल सकते हैं कि आराम से सर्किट ब्रेकर फ्यूज़ नहीं होता फ्यूज़ उड़ जाता है तो फ्यूज़ को चेंज होना पड़ता है बट वन इट कम्स टू सर्किट ब्रेकर यू डोंट नीड टू चेंज इट यू जस्ट यू नो यू जस्ट फट द स्विच अप अगेन एंड देन यू रीसेट इट सो ईजिली रीसेटबल ठीक है और आप ये भी लिख सकते हैं कि जल्दी से वो करंट को रोक देता है तो फ्यूज़ से ज़्यादा जल्दी काम करता है सो quick response in cutting off current you can also say that it protects against overheating but maine upar likh diya hai ke protects against damage to the lawn mower so it would be the same thing but you can write it it's in the marking scheme and i think this is it yes we're done with this paper and i hope you guys understood everything if you guys have any um if you guys have any questions please mention it in the comments and i'll try my best to get back to you and i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much and laughs